Shalom Daily Dabbers, I'm here in Netanya, Israel with the founders of Yield Tech. You're with uh, Oriel Raven and Nachshol Cohen. Nice to meet you both. And now you guys are doing great things here in Israel. You guys have a brand here in Israel called Yield Tech that is um, doing great things. Can you explain more? Yield Tech basically it's an uh, agro-technological company that does a solution for the cannabis industry. Basically specialized uh, our company in this field. Uh, we have a team of scientists that does uh, the research for us. Uh, we have an actual, he's a pharmaceutical chemist in his profession. And uh, together we sorted out the best solution for this industry. Iltec emerged from a need. I was uh, involved in the medicinal cannabis industry from starting from the beginning here in Israel. My father was a terminal uh, cancer patient in uh, multiple myeloma. And when he was diagnosed with cancer and uh, the Israeli medicinal cannabis just started, we found it uh, beneficial for him to get the license to grow and use his own medication. So we applied for the license. My mother was growing it for him. We were licensed to grow only 10 plants at the time. It was uh, a life-changing experience. Being a medicinal chemist, I understood the drawbacks and the problems with using a botanical source for doing a standardized and safe medicine. As you can see in many articles around the world, many of the challenges that we are facing growing uh, uh, cannabis as a medicine is standardizing the active ingredients and ensuring the safety. And many safety issues arise in Israel, alike in Canada and in the United States, finding uh, residual uh, solvents in products, finding residual insecticides or uh, all kinds of uh, chemical treatments. Having the understanding of what the industry required and uh, using organic-based additives for growing cannabis myself, I found it a good time to step out and introduce the solutions that we know based on Israeli plants and Israeli products to the world of uh, medicinal cannabis growers. That's amazing, very inspirational and um, comes from a good place and it makes the most sense because you have to have the organic product, especially when it's medicinal, it's, it's so essential, you know, you can really take away all the medicinal parts if you have too many additives to it and everything, so that's great. So being in Israel, becoming from an Israeli market and stuff, it's, 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 it's very small and it's very unique in its own way, but in, what made you guys think to go and compete and go into such a vast market globally? Israel is currently based at the, at the forefront of technology and uh, innovation, basically. From us to come here and use the tools that we have here surrounding us, uh, that was something that just needed to be done. We had already the, the, the great connection, the knowledge and everything. So we decided to establish this company and uh, take it uh, as a leader in the market. Israel is actually already a major player in the fertilizer industry. We are a big, uh, actually the world's biggest supplier of uh, uh, phos um, potassium uh, nitrate, uh, for example, and other type of uh, fertilizers. We have technologies that comes to IPM management or integrated pest management uh, uh, technologies by BioB in the north. We wanted to exploit or use the fact that Israel is a leader in agro and high-tech to use this power, this knowledge uh, base here in Israel and to create products in the near future and, in, and presently for the cannabis industry. And I can give you examples. One of the world's uh, research uh, centers that is leading the agro-technological ad advancement is, uh, for example, Volcani Center that is uh, located in, uh, that is basically a government. Uh, government funded. Uh, yeah. Israel is a desert country and desert plants uh, produce specialty chemicals in order to uh, fight the stress for themselves. We try to uh, use that benefits and transfer them to cannabis and we were testing it and it, uh, it looks promising. It's exciting stuff. So what is so special about your guys' fertilizers aside from the rest on the market? Our fertilizers are first of all 100% organic. Secondly, 100% vegan, which means no animal extract whatsoever. Further, most important, uh, we base our fertilizers on uh, Israeli uh, desert plants extract, which means that those plants are uh, unique because they can uh, withstand uh, a lot of stress, a lot of climate changes, and basically a rough environment to live in, which means whatever uh, is good enough for the desert it probably can withstand any climate and any place uh, that those fertilizers are being used at. Oh, that's really cool.
What's Yieltek's vision for the future? The way I see it is uh, we would like to expand the agro-technological tools. I'm actually looking right now at a few other agro-technological challenges that we are facing as medicinal cannabis growing when it comes to uh, creating clones or uh, material for uh, growing and uh, the way we manage our cultivation or the way we inspect our cultivation and give uh, tools and materials that is based on innovation and practicality uh, for this uh, market. And this, uh, this company has basically uh, two sides. One of them is uh, agronomical, the other one is technological. So uh, we are currently developing some uh, technological solutions that can uh, benefit the medical cannabis industry uh, quite a lot. And we do believe that we can bring this industry to the next phase. Wonderful. I'm excited for you guys to do that. You know? Why is it important to use natural and vegan fertilizers? Our statement is not that organic is uh, good and uh, chemical fertilizers or mineral fertilizers are bad, but we look at the whole picture. And the whole picture is not only if the origin of the elements that the plant is absorbing is coming from a chemical plant or coming from some kind of a cave from Peru, because the actual animal matter coming from the cave in Peru, how does that affect the planet? How does that affect the environment? How, how do you control the uh, vectors of contaminations you have when you, when you bring uh, manures from all over uh, when you, and you start shipping them between uh, countries? The actual cost of bringing them or the solar being burned in order to ship them, you cannot just say, oh, this is organic and this is chemical, so this is healthier for the planet. It's just not as simple. We believe that you are what you eat. And uh, we have uh, even a special uh, blog in our website about it. Basically, whatever you give your plant is, the more it's healthier for him, the way the plant is healthier. We have found out that those organic fertilizers are the, the healthiest that the plant can get. So that's the exact result you should expect when you're using our fertilizers. I'm interested in the science on how you can get certain essential minerals to the plants without using any type of animal byproduct or synthetic. The whole concept you were wondering about elements is not that I don't need elements for the plants. We actually, the things that we focus on is basically optimizing transport of existing elements. Doesn't matter if you feed them from an animal feed or from chemical feed or from the land itself or from composting. It depends on the, on the system you're growing in. I cannot uh, face the question in uh, organic uh, farming outdoors to greenhouses in yeah. soilless mixtures and hydroponics in the same sentence because it's different questions. There's all different variables in each one. There's so in land I would have a certain answer, which means we, the, most of the elements already exist in the land and right. we need to improve uh, breakdown and uh, to improve transportation and improve the, the bacteriological or microbiological uh, spectrum in, in, the, in the land which can share uh, water and uh, micronutrients from a, a much larger surface area than plants can uh, through um, um, all kinds of, uh, from a mycelium structure, if you know what it is. It's a mushroom vegetative face uh, uh, organ that can be quite big, uh, sometimes even huge. And um, Basically, the microbiology is, is synergistic and very complicated. I will not say that we figured out how it works, but this is what we focus on in an organic environment. What, would we, what we would focus on if we would go for deep water culture, for example, is uh, trying to um, to supply the plant with elements that is available to the plant in nature but is not available to the plant in a in a closed loop system because due to inavailability in, even in the uh, uh, in the industry so then where is the issue of using plant i mean like animal feces like bats guana or you know there's a worm castings well, I mean, there's so that. many different ones that like will really help your plant and you do organically find that come the plant does organically come across that in nature First of all, if you don't have an alternative, then sure. Secondly, if it's manufactured and grown locally, for example, you have, if you have a cave of guano next to your garden, then it's okay by me, according to my concept, it's 
it's okay to use, or if you're composting the, the, the manure of your cows locally, okay, then that's a sustainable uh, concept, and I totally support it. Now what you need to worry about when you do it? Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that the composting uh, is thorough, because that's what kills all the germs, right? The fact that it's, it heats up, the compost heats up to 60 or more degrees, and yeah. that is killing all the, the germs, all the uh, pathogenic. The beneficial um, germs, right? No, no, the pathogenic. If you have a chicken and he has, I don't know, uh, um, salmonella in it, you kill the salmonella in the... In At the a certain temperature. Yeah, in our concept, plants don't have salmonella. Plants don't have these type of germs. So when you're using vegan, it's just better. It doesn't, it doesn't say that using uh, animal-based products is not beneficial to your plants. Your plants will be happy with it. It, but it, the, the, when you're composting them, because especially when it's in the heat, it gets so hot in there, you're definitely burning off pathogens and stuff like that. Because, I know. Yeah, so, but that's good though. That's great. Oh, okay. It's great. I'm not 100% against anything. I'm not here to like push vegan, vegan, vegan. We aren't talking about growing medicinal cannabis. Now, people are trying to validate the process in a safe way. If you need to validate a product that was growing using uh, uh, animal, products, it wouldn't be the same like doing it using a vegan products. This is as simple as it gets. When you are uh, managing uh, re uh, risk factors of contaminants, you need to calculate all uh, possible risk of contaminants when you're doing your project. For example, the water. The water needs to be clean of heavy metals. The land needs to be clean of heavy metals and from all kinds of other pathogens. And if you're using a fertilizer that is non-vegan, it's another risk of contamination you hold in your in your facility. Does that mean that it's not good for the plant? I didn't say it. Does that say that it's not a good way to grow a, a medicinal cannabis? It depends from what hat you're wearing. If I have to summarize what uh, Yiltek is about, we believe in science. We believe in uh, growing smart. We believe in grow smart as a person and growing smart as a grower. Uh, we believe that, uh, as the great Reed Spear said in his book, uh, Marijuana, we, uh, cultivation reconsidered, he said that uh, growing plants is an, uh, it's not an art form, it's a scientific field and uh, there's no room for guessing here. It's either science or basically science. That's 100% of what you have. So if, if there is any room for guessing, that's only, uh, it's only amplified the, the need of more science in that era. It's like uh, giving an a integrated kind of, of way of thinking. So of course the science is extremely important, but we we do think, for example, I did use and experimented with moon uh, cultivation. See how the moon affected uh, uh, ears and yeah, and it's not that I am um, looking at it 100% sci scientifically, but I am uh, coming from a science, uh, science background and I'm not uh, coming here to... Uh, we test all the products that we are uh, providing the, all the uh, all the products, all ill tech products that currently in the market are in the market after growing tons of cannabis. And uh, the products that still not released to the market, it's because we still didn't use them to grow tons of cannabis. And when we will, it's probably going to get to the market. So we like to trust ourselves totally in the product we release to the product before they are even offered to anyone. And um, I know it's not in the place, but another remark to what you said before regarding uh, water consumption so, uh, and the methodologies you use to use water properly. It's a very big issue here in Israel because we are in drought since the establishment of the country. <laughs> okay, so we invented drip irrigation, for example, like Israel, not me, myself, but Netafim was inventing uh, drip irrigation and fertigation. We invented uh, uh, many uh, plant resistance to, uh, uh, we have problems with salinity as well, of course, because we grow in the desert. And if you will come down with me to the desert and you will see the amount of vegetables we are exporting to the European market growing in the desert, organically and non-organically, you will be quite amazed how we turned the desert into a prospering, uh, actually we're growing cannabis over there also, like one of the companies is growing there as well. And uh, so a lot of the focus is on saving water. In the near future, we hope to help gather and uh, uh, make available a few solutions we have to, to save water as well.
Okay, so do you guys currently have any base fertilizers? Uh, our base fertilizers, basically what we, uh, we consider as our mineral line, is currently under final testing and it should be out uh, to the market very soon. We have our line of supplements out already. That's we, what we, we refer to as our biological line. Uh, those supplements, as, as we already said in this interview, it's very 100% organic and 100% vegan. And uh, they're also very universal, which means you can use them with any base fertilizers of any other company if needed. Uh, we do recommend and we do, we do believe that the optimal result will, you will get once using them with our base, base fertilizers and all of our other solutions. Where can we buy your products? Basically any grow shops. First of all, here in Israel. And secondly, uh, around the world, we're currently um, working on distributing those products uh, to the US, to Canada, Colombia, and all those sorts of deal are currently. So if people go online, perhaps, like to a website and order your products, if they don't, let's say a local hydro store doesn't have it? Or? These, these products are produced in Israel, and right now we are taking uh, care of the regulatory affairs for exporting it to different countries. You need to collect all the paperwork and submit it yeah. to the regulatory and get it going. Once we will be in the U.S. market, I do believe you can get them online. Grow shop owners and uh, hydroponic store owners can contact us. We have uh, an, an option for business inquiries in our website and we will send them samples and they can test our products uh, by themselves and uh, decide for themselves. We will do our best to, to provide them with our products as soon as, as possible. So you guys mentioned that your products will be in Colombia. What's going on in Colombia with regarding medical cannabis um, and cultivation? Colombia just uh, changed its laws uh, and recently and uh, licensed few companies to work in the medicinal cannabis arena for export as well. And we've been approached by those several companies. Uh, and we actually in the process of providing uh, farmers, Colombian farmers with uh, organic uh, fertilizers to grow medicinal cannabis for processing into medicinal grade oils in uh, Colombia. You guys, thank you so much for coming by and teaching the, me and the viewers everything about Yield Tech. Where can the viewers go and find more information? You can go to our website, www.yieldtech.co, our Facebook page, uh, or our LinkedIn page, Yield Tech LTD. We have all the information you need over there. Hi, we're Yield Tech. And you're watching Daily Dab TV. Boom. Boom.